Hi, it's Lee and welcome to the Tesla Economist. All right, we've had a few major news events occur with Tesla, but I still would like to get through further analysis of this very informative earnings call. I feel like it was a treasure trove of information, so don't want to miss any of it. We're only up to the shareholder questions, and we were asked about Tesla meeting the threshold for the Inflation Reduction Act. And Elon says that they do expect to meet all the requirements. Tesla seemed very happy about the act, in that it will be a significant boost to accelerating the mission, along with scaling the battery supply chain within the United States. The Treasury will publish detailed guidance before the end of the year. Until then, it is difficult to fully determine the eligibility criteria, but Tesla believe that they are very well positioned to capture a significant share of that for solar storage and, of course, electric vehicles. I'm also starting to think that the Inflation Reduction Act has less to do with climate change and more to do with the US becoming independent in energy and transport, relying on fewer nations to support their needs. It's likely an extension of more semiconductor fabs being built in the US. Two big ones are the Samsung one in Austin and TSMC one in Arizona. And yes, we also seem to think that the Inflation Reduction Act is a big deal for Tesla too, and think that there's a chance Tesla might even receive the lion's share of it. Of course, some people are saying that Ford or GM will actually overtake Tesla in electric vehicles by around 2025 or 2026. These people, I assume, aren't great at simple arithmetic. This is the Tesla Enrichment Act. I keep bringing the tax credits and subsidies up whenever it's relevant, as it makes a huge difference, especially when Tesla are talking about ramping up to 1,000 gigawatt hours a year in the US. Now, it sounds like Tesla will hit that level of production in the US when the IRA is still in effect, unless it has already cost too much prior. And if Tesla are getting $35 per kilowatt hour of cell and battery manufactured in the US, then the subsidies for the cells alone would equate to $35 billion a year in pure profit. If Tesla was able to get the cost of their new platform down to half the cost of a Model 3, it might be somewhere around $15,000 to produce. Given that they were selling the standard range plus Model 3 for just $38,000 last year, if that was still with a 25% margin, then the cost was under $28,500 to build. If this new low cost vehicle has a 40 kilowatt hour battery, and we're talking about another $7,500 off the price with the tax credit, Tesla could sell them for $10,000 and still profit $2,500 or 25% margin without any other add-ons. I think this is going over people's heads. A quick side note, what if Tesla are confident in their 4680 sales and feel that like they could ramp up very quickly soon once sorted and can perhaps hit halfway to this 1000 gigawatt hour year target by 2025 or something? Well, that would be enough sales for 10 million of these new low cost cars. Tesla can have as much demand as they want for these cars. Again, by adjusting pricing to create demand. They could even software limit them to 200 miles of range and sell them for $32,500, which is $25,000 to the consumers after incentives. Remember, it's also close to $15,000 equivalent ownership of an ICE car, especially after insurance and fuel savings, not even mentioning depreciation. This is all possible going by what Elon said. Of course, he also said 1,000 gigawatt hours a year, and I'm just talking about half of that. Then of course, Tesla may not even sell them and might keep them as robotaxis. Or some people think they might sell them for about $100,000 or so, and you can run your own robotaxi fleet. Am I getting too far ahead of myself? Well, so what? What if it's not until 2027? It's still insane. Tesla's FSD is going to work. Elon says he's 100% sure robotaxis will be a thing. We can see plenty of people testing FSD beta and the progress being made there. We're seeing all the right steps in place for this to happen. 4680's dry battery electrode is going to mean they can ramp sales to this sort of level of production. Why is this so hard for some people to believe? If you say I'm getting ahead of myself on all of this and it won't happen as early as I expect, well, all I'm doing is repeating back what we have been told. 4680s are already about one year late, but I'm even more excited about them now than after battery day. I can wait. I'm prepared to be patient. 
all I need to do is research whether or not it will happen. And all the research I do, and the most credible people I hear and talk to, all agree this is going to happen. And like I say, if it's even two years later than when Elon says, then we're almost splitting hairs. As in people saying to me, no Lee, you're so wrong. The stock price won't go up six times in two years, probably more like four years. Either way, I'm still just as excited and it's a great return. Okay, perhaps that wasn't a quick side note after all. Moving on. Elon responds saying, we are basically going to go pedal to the metal as fast as humanly possible to get to 1000 gigawatt hours a year in the US. Now, why doesn't this surprise me? What have I been saying lately, especially with where the US dollar is now? It makes importing components even lower cost too, and more profitable. Tesla will focus on the US, as it's going to be an incredibly profitable market for them. FSD works best there, it's a US brand, their home turf. They want to take market share before the Chinese. Best supercharging infrastructure there, and of course the government incentives. A kilowatt hour manufactured and sold in the US is worth potentially twice as much as anywhere else in the world. Even more if you include FSD. Elon also says the global recession may be a lot softer in the US too. Remember the saying, when the US sneezes, the rest of the world catches a cold? Well, it still holds true. Nothing's changed. And we're seeing firsthand just how powerful the US dollar still is. And America is once again by far the richest nation. Then Elon reminds us again that this will be vertically integrated, which a lot of people condition with lower cost, of which it will be. But Tesla's costs are already so low. I think now the main benefit of the full vertical integration is that Tesla are able to operate autonomously. On similar lines as to what I just mentioned about the US, are we really sure the government and Tesla aren't working together? Or did Elon just make sure Tesla was in the right place at the right time. America really is moving to further independence. And perhaps this is part of the subsidies to remove more dependence on foreign oil too. I know everyone likes to think China are going to be the global superpower, but I would never doubt what the US is capable of. Only a few decades ago, China was still an agrarian society. Also, if you want to compare markets in the US, if Tesla are hitting this 1000 gigawatt hour a year run rate, by around the same time GM and Ford sell and battery factories are complete, then excluding Tesla's other suppliers, then they have 75% market share of batteries. But if Tesla are making these smaller vehicles with a smaller battery size, then Legacy are on average probably using about twice as large a battery per vehicle, giving Tesla more like 85% market share of domestic EVs. There'll be other EVs too, but Tesla could very well maintain about 65% market share. Remember, Tesla will also be the only EVs that are also AVs too, at least the public can purchase. Now, admittedly, I'm not counting any of that 1000 gigawatt hours as energy supply, which I'm still unsure about, as Tesla would use LFP sales for that. And we'll talk more about what Elon said about LFP in another video. We'll also try and place a value on 1000 gigawatt hours a year in a later video. Elon is then asked about the future backlog, and in particular China. Elon replies saying that China is experiencing a sort of recession due to the property market. He's a little coy about answering China specifics, but now we know why. And they were intending on dropping prices. By the way, I also need to mention to all of you that those of you who did tell me that the price only dropped to 299,000 yuan were actually correct, and it wasn't 288,000. Tesla only dropped the price of the Model Y just below the subsidies threshold at 299,000, which is actually only a 5% price drop, but it means including the subsidy, it's an 8.5% lower price for the consumer. So I actually thought it was about twice as bad as it was. And that $250 million loss in gross profit a quarter is actually probably less than $150 million. But also remember, this includes extra sales as well. So the gross profit will actually be higher than before Tesla ramped up. We can look more into that when we start to make some estimates for Q4. Elon also mentions European recession driven by energy, something that Tesla could also eventually benefit from once they step up the energy business. Tesla appears to be in the right place for everything that is happening in the world and can benefit on such a tremendous scale as long as they start getting some good production numbers. 
But that's the thing about exponentials. You won't see them coming. Suddenly, they'll be enormous. Elon also says North America is in pretty good health, which is another reason, in addition to the Inflation Reduction Act, I keep saying how Tesla is going to thrive in the US. Although he does mention the high interest rates, but he also agrees with my view that the Fed will likely bring them down again. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.